Uh, my name is Steve Danitz. I am the hatchery manager at the Suns Bayfront on the Bayfront Highway in Erie, Pennsylvania. You've been here a while, have you? I've been the hatchery manager for two years. Mm -hmm. I'm a student at Gannon University. This is a scholarship position that we run. We get our eggs from the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission roughly every January. We receive annually about 50,000 eggs. Okay, what and what uh, species are you talking about to begin with? And we have we receive steelhead eggs. Uh -huh. They are probably 30 days old when we receive them from the Fish and Boat Commission. They originally come from Trout Run, which is a local stream. Yes. Mm -hmm. Erie, where they are uh, anesthetized down in uh, Tynesta. They are then fertilized, and after that 30 day process, they end up back here with us. About 10 days after we receive them, they'll hatch. And the first couple days, about eight, we don't have to do anything because they will survive off the yolk sacs. And after that, we start feeding them small pinches of food. We have volunteers that run this hatchery. Uh, they come down, they clean out the dead eggs and stuff that mm -hmm. happen from the hatch. Mm -hmm. They also help to feed the fish. Well, what do you think is the percentage of eggs that you get that, that literally go on through the whole process? you lose about a, a good percentage of them or most with, of you keep? With our 50%, with our 50,000 eggs we receive, we get about an 80% hatch rate compared to a 2% hatch rate if it would be in the wild. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we hatch a lot more fish, which means we can raise a lot more. Yeah. And when they're releasing the streams the following year, that will give us, the anglers, a better return, which is why Erie has by far the best steelhead run in all the Great Lakes. Amen, brother. I didn't realize that the fish come out of trout run, they take them down to Tynesta before you actually get the eggs. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the reasons um, it's considered nursery waters and it's off limits. Yeah. It's because those fish are taken by the fish biologists and that's where our eggs come from. And then after they the process is complete, the fish are put back into trout run so they can come back. Because steelhead, unlike salmon, uh, will spawn and go back out to the lake if they're healthy enough and come back for years at a time. I didn't realize that the fish actually had to travel that far to actually have the process. I, for some reason I thought there's a trout run hatchery right there or something they did with the eggs there, but... There is a hatchery there where they do take some of the eggs, mm -hmm. but for the majority a lot of them go down to Tynesta and okay. Lionville. And that's the that's a fish commission property down there as well. Yes. Yeah. And then they strip the eggs, and those fish actually travel from here the whole way down there, and then yep. there's, that takes place, and they bring them back up and put them back in the water. They do. Yeah. I know I've been around over at Walnut Creek, different places in Elk Creek, when they bring back the fish in, they'll they'll they're spawned out and they dump them back in. Yep. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, well, not a lot of times this year. I know uh, we had a class from Gerard, um, some special handicapped students. They brought a class down after they released the fish and they put them in a basin and they allowed the children, because uh, it's wheelchair, wheelchair accessible mm -hmm. down there to have a good time. Did the, did the fish cooperate? And they did. <laughs> you never know, huh? Some of, them caught, some of them caught fish, some of them didn't, but they all had a good time. That's wonderful. And then the, the fish stay here until, well, we all know that everyone that fishes up here, sometime in March the smolts are ready to, to go out or do they go someplace else where they're held for a while before they're stocked? After we have the fish for roughly two months after they're hatched, mm -hmm. uh, they head out with Bob Hetz to his raceways in 3CU where he hangs on to them. Uh, he raises them until they're about seven to nine inches long. The following spring is when they're released back into the streams uh, at the small stage. Uh, 3CU is a, also a nonprofit organization. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've, I've seen different places where there's signs along the road up by the gravel pit, different places where they have uh, raceways there that they hold them in. And I know up at Stratitania, mm -hmm. they've got some there as well. Uh, there's a couple of raceways. One is off of Stratitania mm -hmm. uh, by West Road in McCain. There's also one um, off of Stratitania Road a little farther north uh, by Walnut Creek Middle School. Mm -hmm. And Bob also has a couple of his raceways out in Prairie off of Middle Road. Now, besides steelhead, any other species here? Um, one of the reasons that the steelhead leave is because the suns also do perch and walleye eggs. 
the walleye are taken from Pontumi, uh, Lionsville area. Mm -hmm. With the Fish and Boat Commission, uh, fish biologists will take their eggs, uh, fertilize them, and get them prepped. And they can send those eggs basically all over the world. Um, they'll pack them on dry ice, mm -hmm. and as long as it gets there within 48 hours to water, uh, they can survive in the water that they're shipped in. And as for the perch that we received, um, this past year we didn't have any perch or walleye, but our perch came from the nets in Misery Bay because the Fish and Boat Commission used to trap for pike to do studies, and we would take the larger perch out of those nets and use them as our broodstock. But because of the VHS, that has become such a problem. Um, and that is? To the hatching program. It's a viral disease that gets into the fish's bloodstream mm -hmm. and kills them. That's why we've had some, some fish kills in not just Erie, but all the Great Lakes. So they're being careful about that kind of propagation? And, and they have to be really careful about mm -hmm. it because it can, it can damage a lot, of, a lot of fish species. And now, seeing that we cannot receive the perch from the Fish and Boat Commission for the traps. Uh, next year we'll have to get out a little early and do some fishing for our own brood stock. Yeah. And we'll, we'll catch our own. But the perch actually will spawn in our tanks as long as we keep uh, a black cover on there. So they're not scared. They get salted every day. A couple salt of the tank, it helps to calm them. Yeah. As I learned from Bob Zawatsky, that's an old ancient Greek way of calming fish. Even though they're not saltwater species, the, the salt helps uh, relax them. And we also catch our own minnows, and that's where we feed the perch. Mm -hmm. They actually spawn excuse me, in our captivity, and we take the eggs and put them in our Sloan Mason jars, which is just a special jar that you put skein into mm -hmm. fish eggs. And they receive a special treatment for about a week to 10 days. And when they start hatching, we have to release them within uh, about a week after the walleye and perch hatch because unlike the steelhead that can live together, the walleye and perch are carnivores and they will start to eat each other. Son of a gun. Because they, they rely on the uh, small animals and invertebrates in the water to eat, they won't eat food that we give them. So the constant fresh water that we give them sometimes isn't enough because we are looking at roughly a million to two million hatched perch and walleye. Now, the, uh, this place is going to be basically dormant now until sometime? Roughly January. January or so? Uh, as the manager and Bob, Bob Zawatsky would get together sometime in mm -hmm. maybe November to get everything started rolling fill all the tanks, make sure they're burned down and clean. So I, I understand you're you're moving on. This is the uh, the last go around for you now. You're going on something else? Uh, I will graduate in December from Gannon and I'll be here in the spring to help along with a new person. As Doug Kramer helped me be three years ago now. Uh, and we'll, we'll pass the tradition on and hopefully this is something that keeps going for a long time. That's great. Now I understand there's a scholarship involved and who's behind the scholarship? The scholarship um, is a two-part, it's a partial scholarship from the Pennsylvania Steel Association. They provide the part for the steelhead raising, and the sons provide the other part for the wall and perch. Excellent. Thank you very much for taking time to talk to me. I appreciate it.